For no special reason, I am building a LED matrix display. When I look around, I can find a lot of LED matrix projects. For example, displays built from 8x8 LED bricks driven by a Max 7219, and also a lot of beautiful NeoPixel projects from makers that have spent a bit more money. I wanted to make a old fashioned, classical looking display. But I also wanted my display to be controllable over the air via my phone or my laptop. This video shows what my display can do and how I made it. My display has 10 rows of 16 LEDs and I can switch each individual LED to off, medium or high. The display is driven by an Arduino Uno. These things don't have 160 pins of course. And so I drive my LEDs with shift registers and Darlington drivers. I start with designing the LED board in KiCad. Each LED is connected to a vertical trace with one leg and all vertical lines end up in the connectors down here. The connector on the left side is connected to pads for each row. You will see later why. The plots from KiCad are transferred into G-code using the Python based freeware Flatcam. I performed the isolation routing on my CNC mill. I had to start over twice actually because my mill kept making mistakes. I remembered that I increased the amperes for its motors recently and it turned out that this was a little bit too much for the power supply so that my mill started to lose steps. I dialed the power back a little bit and everything works fine now. However, I really should upgrade my machine eventually and make a video about it. Milling attempt number 3 worked fine. A hint for CNC hole drilling by the way. A very short or even broken off drill bit makes cleaner holes than a new one because it does not walk around on the surface before digging in. Board number 2 looks a little bit less clean on the mill than the first one. I think I was cutting in too deep because the board was bent up a little bit. But after some careful sanding I ended up with two perfect PCBs. With some help from this piece of wood, I have cut the leads of each LED so that the anode was short and the cathode even shorter. Then the LEDs were soldered onto the board, with the minus connected to the vertical lines. After that, each row got a horizontal line floating on top of the longer anodes that ended up in these pads here. Next thing was to make the controller board that houses two Darlington arrays, two shift registers and a bunch of transistors and resistors. It plugs back to back behind the display. The milling job worked flawlessly this time and I even managed to use the leftover PCB from the two failed attempts. The board is clean right from the mill and looks just gorgeous. Some soldering later the board is populated and ready for use. I used 12 data pins on my Arduino to drive the display. 10 pins drive the 10 rows and the two other pins the columns. This works as follows. All 16 minus leads end up down here and they are connected to outputs of these two Darlington arrays. Imagine them as 8 NPN transistors packed in a double inline package. When an input is set high, the corresponding output gets connected to ground and allows current flow through the LEDs in that column. Each Darlington input goes to any of the outputs of the serial to parallel shift registers. They are a bit more complicated to explain and other people on YouTube do that better than me. Just so much. A shift register has an 8-bit memory connected to the output legs and it gets a data signal and a clock signal as input. At each clock tick, all bits in the memory are shifted by one. This means that I can push in a high signal here and have it walk to the register. I even can connect another register and have the high peak walk through that one as well. This is called daisy chaining shift registers. The output legs of the registers are connected to my Darlington drivers and the high signal that passes each leg decides which column is connected to minus at the moment. The rows are driven by individual PNP transistors. Whenever one of my Arduino row signals is low that transistor is switched on and can power the corresponding row. I can control each pixel in a row. One row is no picture of course, but when I move the active column and give each pixel the correct value, 
a picture becomes visible. When each row is updated 80 times per second, I get a flicker-free picture. Because each LED is switched on only 1 16th of the time, they need to be driven with much more current than usual. That's okay, the only thing that toasts LEDs is heat, and the average current over the second is still low here. The row transistors must stand around 100 milliamps. The resistors here limit the current a bit and protect the LEDs. What can my display do so far? Well, it can show pictures and running text. And I can beam that text or the pictures from my phone or tablet or whatever. I will show how that works in the next video. Till then, my display will hopefully also have a nicer look. See you next time.